I dedicate this song to uh, all the all, all the people, all the people in Ethiopia who are victims of uh, 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 being disappeared. And uh, just like in my country, we have uh, from 2001 to 2009, so we have 205. Uh, most of them are, uh, I know some of them, and most of those uh, that I know were not actually disappeared, but were killed, uh, you know, one by one, almost every day. So uh, that's from 2001 up to 2009, and then the new regime is uh, again starting it. They already had uh, 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 disappeared five and have, uh, you know, some political killings going on. So the title of this song is Light a Candle. I dedicate this to the people of uh, Ethiopia in their endless uh, fight for human rights and peace. And also to my country, uh, uh, folks that up to now are still struggling for peace. A minute of silence for Jonas Moment of silence, please Pain in our heart Turns into tears of sorrow Another life falls to the ground Worthy gift Remember not a reminder for you and for me that the struggle for peace must be handled for peace. Let love and justice glow. Light a candle, candle for peace, and let us read this. Is 
Ali has asked that we take a moment uh, to uh, silence, to remember those who have been killed uh, and who have been disappeared. She's the Minister of Culture, uh, Heritage, and Tourism, Minister responsible for multiculturalism in the government of Manitoba, at least was in the most recent election, of course. Born in Manila, in the Philippines, she immigrated to Canada in 1982. She and her family have since made their home in Winnipeg. In 2007, she unexpectedly entered a career in politics and has made history as the first woman of color elected to the Manitoba Legislative Assembly. In 2009, she became the first visible minority to be included in the Manitoba Provincial Cabinet and, as you may very well know, was just re-elected to the Manitoba. Thank you so much, Alex. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm here not as an elected member of, well, I'm also elected member of the Legislative Assembly, but also as a member of, uh, as a person, member of the large, uh, larger society who's uh, very disturbed at what's happening in Ethiopia and everywhere in the world. Truly, justice, injustice anywhere is injustice everywhere. As you may or may not know, the home country, my country of birth, the Philippines, has had uh, very uh, uh, a history, uh, recent history of enforced disappearances, uh, extrajudicial killings, similar to what happened in Ethiopia or maybe even on a grander scale. So I'm here to express my thanks and appreciation to Ali and Soset to Louise and Amnesty International for bringing to the fore this very disturbing issues of enforced disappearances and political uh, killings. Uh, we, I would like to uh, introduce to you uh, a colleague. Uh, his name is Levi Abad. Uh, he is personally connected to so many of those who died and was uh, uh, missing in the Philippines. But before I do that, please allow me to read only a partial uh, list of names of uh, enforced disappearances in the Philippines since 2001. I, wouldn't, uh, I couldn't uh, read all of the names. It's a long list, several hundreds already since 2001. But allow me to read the names of Rogelio Kaluban, Gabriel Kaluban, Alex Beloy, Danilo Macapagal, Felicidad Catalbas, Honorio Ayroso, Jovito Velasco, Karen Empeño, Patricio Abalos, Richard Coliado, and many, many more. Uh, thank you for coming and, and, and witnessing uh, this event tonight. I hope uh, we will all be uh, working as one to end this uh, gross injustice and, and uh, disrespect for human life. Uh, I'd like now to call on Levi about this song, to... Uh, I dedicate this song to uh, all the all the people, all the people in Ethiopia were victims of uh, 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 being disappeared. And uh, just like in my country, we have uh, from 2001 to 2009, so we have 205. Uh, most of them are, uh, I know some of them, 
and most of those uh, that I know were not actually disappeared, but were killed, uh, you know, one by one, almost every day. So uh, that's from 2001 up to 2009, and then the new regime is uh, again starting it. They already had uh, 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 disappeared five, and have uh, you know some political killings going on. So the title of this song is "Light a Candle." I dedicate this to the people of uh, Ethiopia in their endless uh, fight for human rights and peace, and also to my country uh, uh, folks that up to now are still struggling for peace. A minute of silence for Jonas. of silence, please. Pain in our heart turns into tears and sorrow. Another life falls to the ground. Worthy gift to remember. myself earlier, so you're probably sitting there going, who's this guy's talking about? My name's Alex Friedman, I'm with the CBC. I'm with the I team, I'm not investigating any of you this evening. Uh, and it's a pleasure to be here, and very much an honor. One of the most wonderful things about these evenings is how we deal with such a horrible subject, with such beautiful music and art and, and thought and love, and really it's the way to, to defeat evil, is with good and love and peace. And this is a beginning step, and thank you so much for being here. Our next speaker this evening is Louise Sinbandumwe. She came to Canada as a refugee with her family in 1978. As a former refugee, she's passionate about human rights and social justice and has been actively involved as a volunteer for Amnesty International for over 15 years. Louise. Good evening, everybody. I'm uh, really pleased to see everybody here, and I love that last performance. It uh, had echoes of Amnesty's logo, which is the candle surrounded by barbed wire. And um, it is inspired by a Chinese proverb that says it is better to light a candle than to curse the darkness. And your presence here today is part of doing that. And I just wanted to 
thank all of you for making the time out of your busy schedules to come here and recognize what's happening all over the world. When Ali first introduced this idea to me, I think it was about three and a half years ago, I must admit I was skeptical. He wanted to have an evening dedicated to something that is a very difficult topic for us to contemplate. Thousands and thousands of people all over the world that have gone missing, that are disappeared, and many of them are have been killed. And I wasn't sure that he would be able to pull off the event, and particularly when he said he wanted to have it here at the West End Cultural <coughs> Center. I wasn't sure that all of you would be prepared to come to this event and, and show your support. So I just wanted to again extend my heartfelt thanks to you for coming. And also my heartfelt thanks to Ali who is a constant source of inspiration for me. And uh, whenever I see him and, and talk to him, his passion for human rights comes through loud and clear and knowing his story, knowing what he sacrificed and sacrificed in knowing the risk that he was taking. Uh, he talked about being elected as a leader of a trade union, and he said in Ethiopia, when you accept office as a trade union leader, it's like accepting a death sentence. And sure enough, he was put in jail, he was tortured, and when he was released, he went back to doing what he was doing before. I don't know that I would have the courage to do that, I don't know how many of us in the room would have the courage to do that, but there's thousands and thousands of people all over the world that have that kind of courage, and they are paying a price. And we're here today, and I know that one thing that I am able to do is, as a member of Amnesty International, to recognize what's happening, to name those names, and to write letters, petitions, march, whatever is needed to draw attention to the fact that this is happening, that this is happening to human beings, all over the world, that this is wrong and it must be stopped. And so I'm really proud to be part of an international movement that's dedicated to doing that. And I'm also very proud to be affiliated with a large number of organizations that are part of doing that kind of work in lots of different ways, globally and locally. And we've joined together in something that's called Run for Rights. How many of you have participated in Run for Rights as volunteers or donors or men? Put up your hands, great. Lots of hands going up, excellent. And it is another incredibly inspiring event for me, uh, the Run for Rights. Um, it's last year we had, uh, or this past year we had 16 different organizations, uh, social justice, human rights organizations participating, and it was people from all walks of life, and not just people, there were like cats and dogs. And <laughs> Um, and yeah, and, and people from all walks of life, all ages, and we're going to be holding it again, we're going to be holding it again in June of next year. So I'd invite you to keep your eye out for that. But I'd also like to um, recognize a very special someone who participated for SOSHA, the Solidarity Committee of Ethiopian Political Prisoners, which is part of the organization that Ali is part of. Um, and he was, like every year, um, my mom participates as, uh, either as a volunteer or as a runner, and she's over 60. But we also have very young participants as well. And he completed the full 10 kilometers. Uh, you can either do 5K or 10K, you can cycle, you can walk, but he did the full 10 kilometers. And he's only 11 years old, so I'd like to invite him up to get an award to recognize his contribution. <laughs> Dr. Raya Salahad, everybody. Ali and my dad and my family for giving me this opportunity to run for right human rights. Human <laughs> human rights is definition of the the freedom of everyone and everything. So thank you. 
is the wonderful volunteers who made that amazing meal, and in particular to Aini, Ali's lifetime partner, who's also in front of the group as well. Right, right. Did you didn't even find that place. Where is that young man? Yes, sir. There he is. All right, our, guest, our special guest speaker this evening is Yashahari Warku Mirsha, uh, known as a human rights activist from Toronto and, of course, a strong advocate for women's rights. She lost her family during the Red Terror. Her sister was kidnapped and killed. Living in exile in Canada and unable to go back to Ethiopia because it was too dangerous, she finds herself here. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are here tonight to commemorate those freedom fighters who are harassed, jailed, abducted, disappeared, or killed. Under the current ethnocentric regime freedom of expression, the right of organize, the freedom of movement, and the right to own properties under attack. Those who write against the regime, those who, who speak out their grievance against the regime of those who speak out about the regime, lack of transparency and accountability are paying heavy price. Mothers from their home, teachers and students from their classroom, farmers from their fields, ordinary citizens from their streets, and military personnel from their camps are abducted or killed. Candidates for public office are brutally harassed, threatened, jailed, or killed. Among the many examples, I would like to mention Amaraj Galani, an election observer of the 2010 so-called national election. The people's vote was rigged, and Amaraj questioned the practice. The chief cadre of the regime walked into her home and without any question, killed the mother of five with 23 bullets in front of her children. Three of her children were severely wounded. To this day, the killer is not brought to justice. The government covered up the crime, saying that the victim was killed by her lover. Thousands of Ethiopians are languish in jail. Among those, Abar Rash Berta, Thousands disappeared for fear of persecution. Tens of thousands of are confiscated from their property. And their property is given the regime loyalists. Highly skilled Ethiopians who are educated by Ethiopian taxpayers are leaving the country, causing enormous brain drain to the country. The regime is selling out the nation, the nation fertile lands to foreign interests. Ethiopia is being sold out piece by piece. The regime is spending millions of dollars for lobbyists to keep itself on power while millions are starving in all corners of the country. There is no democracy and the rule of law in Ethiopia. The regime controls the army security force, and the police. The judiciary has no independence. It is in the service of the regime. Those Ethiopians who are we commemorating tonight had a vision for a democratic Ethiopia in which the rule of law prevails and human rights respected. They sacrificed their precious life by brutal regime like Dirk and TPLF. They have disappeared from our sights, but they are still alive in our minds. In commemorating them, we affirm our commitment to finish the struggle they started until Ethiopia is free from dictators and democratic governance established in and justice served. We will not forget our freedom fighters and we will not rest until we achieve our goal. We thank the human rights organizations such as Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, SOSEP, for voicing the tireless the plate of Ethiopians to the world. We encourage you to continue your noble task to the benefit of Ethiopians and the whole of humani humanity 
until Ethiopia is liberated. God bless Ethiopia. God bless Canada. Thank you. He's a political prisoner and a torture survivor. Arrested for advocating for human rights and labor rights for teachers. President of the Ethiopian Teachers Association, was in prison for two years, and he was an amnesty prisoner of conscience, Amnesty International, and a number of other organizations, including the International Teachers Trade Union, ILO, and SOSEP, all worked to secure his release from prison. And we are proud to have him here to speak to you this evening. My name is Kasawu Kapadakio. I was the chairperson of the Asaba Teacher Association, the branch of the Ethiopian Teacher Association, ETA. Following the 2005 national election, I was arrested along with the Coalition for Unity and Democracy, Sweden party leaders, journalists, and human rights defenders. We were charged with treason, including outrage against the Constitution and the constitutional orders. I was in jail for 17 months in Addis Ababa Aliki prison. Because of a lack of evidence or any wrong deed, I was released in April 2007. However, I couldn't continue to live in my country that I was constantly harassed by security force. The state prosecutor repeatedly restated the charge and the police succeeded in receiving a warrant to arrest me. As a result of this constant harassment and to save my life, I fled to Kenya. The time I spent in Kaliti prison was so horrible. During night time, prisoners will be taken out. No one knows where they were taken. A lot disappeared and killed without justice. This is the day-to-day -day work of the tribalist, brutal government. I struggle for teachers' rights and for quality public education for all Ethiopian children. I struggle for freedom of expression of idea and for free teacher association. This is what I have done, nothing else. Finally, I would like to thank the Canadian government that gave me a resettlement in Canada. I also like to thank also the Canadian Labour Congress who showed solidarity and stood beside me in time of my imprisonment that wrote a letter to the Ethiopian government to release me. Last but not least, I would like to thank all human rights organizations such as Amnesty International that exposed the violation of human rights, which have been done by the tribalist dictator of the Ethiopian government in general, in particular the Solidarity Committee for the Ethiopian Political Prisoner, SOSE, that constantly condemn the evil activity of the Wayane government and the release of all political prisoners unconditionally without exception. So I said also raised his voice to the voiceless of the Ethiopian refugees who live in various parts of the world, especially those who are in Egypt, Libya, and Yemen. So I stand for all Ethiopian prisoners, including the disappeared, irrespective of tribe, religion, sex, political or other opinion. So I should be supported in all aspects morally and financially too. So I said, I'm very happy to be with you in the night of the disappeared. Thank you so much. A example of how the money you've brought this evening can do so much good for so many people. Folks, head on back to the lobby and meet up with Ali. He has some instructions for you. Well, uh, so if it's though it wasn't enough that Ali himself did incredible amounts of work for... So I'm Saleh, and um, here today um, I'm representing the EPRP Youth League. And for those of you who don't know, the EPRP is the Ethiopian People's Revolutionary Party, and they're going on their 39th year of struggle towards democracy in Ethiopia. 
A Congress of Youth Delegates formed the Youth, the youth League two years ago in North America, because fortunately we live in a country where we are allowed to exercise our freedom of speech and to openly organize and protest against human rights violations. But the Youth League originated in Ethiopia underground covertly and continues to struggle as the youth wing of the EPRP. We fight for the Ethiopian people and the release of all political prisoners. The Ethiopian youth have a long history of sacrifices. The number of young lives taken by the repressive dictatorship are in the thousands. On April 18, 2001, Ethiopian special forces opened fire on a peaceful protest at the University of Addis Ababa, massacring at least 41 students, which is unbelievable. Like That's probably half the room here of students that were massacred, and wounded 250. Police also raided surrounding churches and mosques, uh, dragging students out who had sought refuge there and loaded them onto military wagons. Thousands of students were arrested and are being held in detention camps in the village of Sandafa, which is 25 miles away from the capital. Hundreds of parents have traveled to the, village, to the village from all over Ethiopia in a desperate attempt to find out if their children are alive or dead. Questions that to this day have still gone unanswered. And that was in, okay, 2001. More recently, on June the 1st, 2011, six female Ethiopian students who refused to remove their hijabs, which is a religious head wrap worn by um, Islamic females, of Wallo University were abducted from their dorms by the Ethiopian Special Forces, and their whereabouts are unknown, and the families are still yet to hear from them. These are just a few examples of the injustices faced by Ethiopian youth, along with the rest of the Ethiopian people. Human rights abuses reported during 2010 included unlawful killings, torture, beatings, and abuse by special forces, police, and militia. The Youth League continues to struggle as a wing of the Revolutionary Party against these atrocities towards a brighter future for the Ethiopian people. The global participation and the support of organizations like SOSEP are very important because we all have a moral obligation to be the voice for the voiceless. I would like to take a moment to remember Mrs. Abarash Barata, who you will see is on the poster here who has disappeared since she was since 1993. I think I was about nine years old when I went to, between eight or nine years old when I went to the first fundraiser with my dad and I had heard her name. I was very young. Um, I, I had an understanding of what was going on, but maybe not the full understanding that I have right now. But when I think back of being nine years old and just hearing about her for the first time, I'm now 21 and they still have no information about where she is and the government is still covering up all the disappearances of these freedom fighters that you see and there's thousands and thousands of them. I mean, this is just six of them right here. She is a well-known activist and is a veteran member of the EPRP. I'd like to thank everyone for coming out tonight and showing support of SOSEP. And I'd like to say that together we stand in the, in the name of democracy and enjoy the rest of your evening. <laughs> um, and I really do appreciate the support and it's a great outcome and really good energy. We really appreciate to see people in, of the community to come together for a cause like this, just to show up support and just to show that, yeah, we're not together. Together we will stand for this, and I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Make sure everyone can see that. So I was speaking with Ali's other daughter earlier, Orit. She's 17 years old. She's a student at Maples. And she was telling me about when she was younger and there had been a woman, a family friend, who uh, was working in Saudi Arabia, was not making any money, was 
uh, in essential slavery. Um, and she talked about how her father had worked tirelessly to have her come here and explained to me that that's really one of those moments uh, that inspired her uh, to do what she does. Uh, as you've seen by his first daughter, there is boundless passion and uh, I think it obviously runs in the family. Um, Orit is with the International Ethiopian Women's Organization and is a tireless actor. Hi everybody. My name is Aritzi, and today I'm speaking on behalf of the International Ethiopian Women's Organization. The organization is established to bring justice, respect of human rights, and peace in Ethiopia. It is devoted to further women's participation in the struggle of women's rights, economic equality, and social stability. As a part of our peace campaign, we call upon the international community to stand for human rights, support our effort to stop human trafficking of young Ethiopian women to modern-day slavery, particularly in the Middle Eastern countries. Thousands of Ethiopian women are being coaxed to the Middle East with promises of work, only to suffer to verbal, physical, and sexual abuse. Among the cases, there have been girls who have returned to Ethiopia paralyzed, insane, broken backs and legs, and girls who have been suffering from being burned with acid, some never return to their homes, and their families have no idea to where to find them. The International Ethiopian Women's Organization supports and struggles along with SOSEP for the release of all political prisoners like Abarash Burta. We continue the movement to promote justice, freedom, and peace in Ethiopia. Thank you for your time and your support. The next speaker has uh, a lot to do with SOSEP. He does public relations for them. I deal with public relations people a lot, and it's not an easy job. Ranu um, is one of these people, when you ask him why he does this, he looks at you in the eye and he says, first of all, Ali. Inspired by Ali. But secondly, he says, you just have to fight. You just have no choice. He's a cultural Ethiopian dancer. He's also an IT professional at Canadians, and he's here to speak to us this evening. My name is Brahano Muscano. I'm the public relation for SOSEP Human Rights Organization in Winnipeg. First of all, I would like to thank all of you for coming to join us marking the remarkable night, the night of the disappeared. Without taking so much of your time, I would like to tell you a little bit about SOSEP organization and recent activities. SOSEP is a non-sectarian, non-political, non-profit humanitarian organization established by concerned people to publicize the pledge of Ethiopian political prisoners with a special focus on neglected and forgotten ones to solicit support from international public opinion in calling for the respect of human rights and due process of law in Ethiopia. Our aims and objectives are to draw attention to pledge of the political prisoners and to gain support for their releases. To focus on those political prisoners forgotten or neglected by other human rights organizations. To call for the respect of human rights in Ethiopia. To solicit help and assistance of the political prisoners and their affected families to sensitize international public opinion with a view of pressurizing the EPRDF government to respect the human rights of the people and to release all political prisoners. Disappearances. The EPRDF regime is constantly and flagrantly violating the basic human and democratic rights of Ethiopian people. SOSEP is just one of the many human rights body which have over the years registered and condemned those violations. For quite some time, there was a tendency to compare the record of the present government with that of the fallen, the military regime, Nangistu Hailamariam, and to declare things have improved on their flimsy and debatable presumption that it is better if the massacre are few, the killings reduced, and the violation kept out of public sight. That such comparison is gross injustice to victims of 
the crime of the present regime is now more or less accepted by many quarters and the regime of Bella Zenawi is being judged on its own merits and the verdict is harsh. The case of the disappeared is one of one aspect of the continuing problems, the relentless subjugation of the vast majority of the people, the denial of rights, the use of force as the legitimizing base of power, the arbitrary and ruthless repression, the prevailing climate of fear, of anxiety, the absence of real peace. In Ethiopia, the exact number of people who have been detained by the government and who have subsequently disappeared is not known. Some put figure in hundreds, while others claim it is less than 200. Amnesty International has reported that it has received reports of dozens of disappearances cases. However, we can safely say that many political descendants have indeed disappeared. And pattern can discredit from the EPRD practice position on the matter. The disappeared are in most instances feared dead. The fear emanates from the EPRD of denial of any knowledge of whereabouts of the political prisoners. For example, in the cases of EPRF members such as Ababa Anyo, Sagai Garamajan, Yisak Damtarao, Sutota Hussein, Baleta Maha, Yusuf Araya, Tekle Gavrasilasi, Brahanu, Tunlu, etc. The EPRDF has denied ever holding them captive through several witnesses, though several witnesses testify to the contrary. Many of the relatives of the disappeared fear that their kin are dead either from torture or from an arbitrary decision by authorities. None of the disappeared was brought before a court of law. Despite denial, it's now common knowledge that EPRDF operates very many ghost houses, private residences turned into prisons and torture centers in Addis Ababa, other towns, and has in the provinces turned government establishments housing to secret prison. Many of the inmates of these prisons and ghost houses have become the disappeared. That's why we're here today, the night of the disappeared. A closer look at the APRDF practice shows a conscious of systematic pattern of hundering, harassing, and repressing serious political dissent. Such actions are untaken, undertaken by goons or secret squad controlled by the top of men, by the top men of ruling TPLF. These are extra legal days squad type force that operates in secrecy and with impunity. They terrorize, they abduct, they execute. Thank you for listening. Tonight we honor these people that have disappeared, that are in jail. In respect of that, we have this night. And thank you for joining us. Eloquent speaker for somebody who has stage fright. Wow, that was wonderful. All right. Um, when I was introduced to uh, Janine Legal, I uh, I asked her, uh, "Who are you? What do you do? What is your essence? What are you about?" And she looked at me and went, "I'm not sure." And immediately, several people jumped in, and the first one said, "Well, she's an activist, and she is tirelessly fights for." umpteen causes. And the next one said, she's an artist, she's a freelance writer, she writes these wonderful pieces. And then finally the next one jumped in and said, she has the biggest heart you can begin to imagine. And so, Janine Liga. Most beautiful introduction I've ever had in my entire life. Thank you very much. That was a beautiful thing. Um, it's, it's a wonderful thing to see all of you in this room. I'm going to be very, very honest with you. I have been a, an activist for 30 years, um, and a lot of those years have been very difficult because when you call yourself a human rights activist, what that means is that you have to be willing to defend 
and to be there for all humans, not just some humans, but all of them. No matter where they come from, no matter what color they are, no matter what their religious beliefs might be, no matter what their political beliefs might be. And so I have prided myself on being there for people because that's what I believe in. That's, that's what I'm about. And that's not always easy because it sort of uh, opens you up to criticism. Um, but I'm not here to focus on the criticism, I'm here to focus on the beauty that happens when communities work together. And we are here tonight, why? Why are we in this room tonight? We're in this room because we care, because we care about people, because we care about people here, because we care about people in Ethiopia, because we care about people all around the world. And we don't care what color they are, and we don't care what they believe, or what their religion is, or what their political stripes might be. We care about their safety, and we want them to be loved and to be taken care of, as all of us want to be. It's very, very simple, very simple. And uh, I'm not going to talk for too long, but I just wanted to say that my I have a very, very profound belief. I think I'm kind of an old hippie, and I really believe that we can have paradise on Earth. But in order to have that, we have to choose love, and we have to choose forgiveness. And um, those two things go a long way to bringing people together. And what's happened tonight is that I've seen some of the most beautiful aspects of people working together, um, and it's extremely powerful. We've seen it with, with the hoop dancers being proud of the beauty that is within us. We've seen it with the, the various people that have come up here. And so I just would encourage all of you to uh, to get involved in, in our communities. We have incredible people here in Winnipeg from all over the world, every country in the world, and Ethiopia is one of them, and I have many, many good friends from Ethiopia, so I'm happy that you're all here, and it means a lot to everybody who's put this thing together. Ali Saeed is a wonderful man and uh, a great inspiration to us all. Thank you so much. Janine. Um, Janine. I know has already been introduced, but I'd also like to add a couple of words of appreciation to someone who came to Canada as a refugee. There aren't very many of us who, based on the work that we do, can say that the work that we've done has literally saved lives. And Janine, although she would never say that, I'm going to say it for her. Janine, the work that you do saves lives. And it's heartbreaking work, and I just want to thank you so much for continuing to do it, even though at times it's incredibly painful. I'd also like to acknowledge another person who's also one of my favorite people, um, and surprisingly enough, one of Ali's children, uh, Ina Lam Ali. And she's also someone that brings just diverse communities together, and her passion is HIV AIDS and saving lives by stopping the spread, both in Canada and overseas. And she brought together the most incredible cross-cultural coalition in Central Park for a celebration and an educational event um, that has happened on a regular basis. And it was just a real honor and privilege to work with her. So, so And then this part of the evening is focused on the disappeared. And throughout the evening, we've been naming the names of people that have been disappeared. And whenever Ali speaks either to the media or at an event, he always names names. And as someone who had relatives that were killed um, in political killings uh, that claimed the lives of tens of thousands of people in Burundi. I know how significant that is uh, because one of the most painful things of coming out of that experience is the sense that these people that we loved so much have literally disappeared. It's almost like they never existed. It's almost like their humanity has been stripped away from them. And one thing that I've heard time and time again from people that have been disappeared who've managed to emerge out of that is that one of the things that their abductors say to them is nobody knows that you're here, nobody cares. And it's part of breaking the spirit along with the torture and all of that. But 
That is one of the most painful things. And so what we're doing tonight is really important. Acknowledging that this is happening, and secondly, naming the names. So what I'd like to do is invite the fabulous youth, the Canada World Youth, to come up here on stage with me, as well as one of my other most favorite people in the world, Lisa Forbes, who's a member of the Stop Violence Against Aboriginal Women and Girls group that I'm part of. So if you could please join me on the stage, all of the Canada World Youth asked for happens. And in some case, it's the miraculous situation like Ali being released from prison and ending up in safety in Canada. So I'd like to invite all of the youth to come forward and to read the names. Good evening. Femi Pitals, prisoner of conscience, Gambia, released December 10th, 2010. Freddy Moreno Lorenzo, shot to death by police on April 11, 2011. Dominican Republic. Adrey Sanicao, prisoner of conscience, Belarus, arrested on 19th December, 2010. Mary Ann um, Bahem, women's rights activist, Iran, arrested May 11, 2011. Teheb Ben Othman, trade union leader, Tunisia, released November 4, 2009. Justin Masika Bahamba, women's rights defender, Democratic Republic of Congo. Her family was attacked and threatened by soldiers. Ali Abdul Khalid Al Jahaf, protester at risk of torture, Iraq, arrested in May 27, 2011. Teklai Jeba Selassie, disappeared in 1991 in Ethiopia. Adel Jahar, trade union leader, Tunisia, released November 4, 2009. Ricardo Ayala Abarca, disappeared August 22, 1982 in El Sab. El Salvador at the age of 13. Ibrahim Mohamed O. Sharkawi disappeared May 29, 2011, Pakistan. Oscar Reyes, an indigenous, an indigenous farmer killed over land dispute May 21, 2011, Guatemala. Seleshi Hagos, journalist, Ethiopia, arrested on September 14, 2011, at risk of torture. Hassan Habla disappeared in 1992 in Ethiopia. James Bala disappeared September 17, 2008 in Philippines. Maria Cecilia Margaret Florenza disappeared in Chile. Yehwalashid Mekinen disappeared in Ethiopia. Abdullah Mohab El Sharkawi disappeared. Disappeared May 25, 2011, Pakistan. Francisco Marshall, prisoner of conscience, Mexico, released in September 2009. Jose Andrian Rogers Hernandez disappeared in December 12, 1980, in El Sheikh Ali Amdi Wande disappeared in 1992 in Ethiopia. Kamit Shutev Ambi disappeared in June 8, 2006 in Russian Federation. Alvarez Berta disappeared in Ethiopia. Bulat Chelov disappeared April 9, 2006 in Chechnya. Mirta Monica Alonso Blanco disappeared in Chile. Dereje Kana disappeared 1992 in Ethiopia. Ye Bushu, prisoner of conscience, China, released October 15, 2008. Hawa Abdullah, at risk of torture and ill treatment, arrested on 6 May 2001, 2011 in Sudan. Kem Shoha, prisoner of conscience, Cambodia, released January 2006. Belete Amha disappeared in Ethiopia. Jaime Antonio Barrios Meza disappeared in Chile. Kabede Tadese disappeared in Ethiopia. Jakohon Sheiko Ali, prisoner of concerns, 
Syria, say, <coughs> released October 3rd, 2009. Fahad Salem al Shehi, prisoner of concerns, United Arab Emirates, arrested on, on April 10th, 2011.